Let's look at question number six for the 2017 AP Calculus BC free response. They began by giving us some valuable things. f of zero is zero, f prime at zero is one, n plus one's derivative of f at zero is negative n times n's derivative evaluated at zero for n greater than or equal to one. Interesting. Now what do they tell us? A function f has derivatives of all orders for x between negative 1 and 1. The derivatives of f satisfy the conditions above. And the Maclaurin series for f converges to f of x for absolute value of x less than 1. Interesting. Once again, what's part A? Show that the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series. So Taylor series, Maclaurin series is what? Taylor series expanded about x equals to 0, and we want to show that uh, the Maclaurin series for f in this case is x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4, and they want us to write the general term of the Maclaurin series for f. How can we do that? We can start by finding some of the terms. What, what do we know? What, what is Maclaurin series? Maclaurin series is f of 0 plus f prime of 0 x plus, let's go on, plus f double prime of 0, x squared over 2 factorial, let me go on a bit more, plus triple prime of x, a uh, triple prime at 0, x cubed over 3 factorial, plus, let's go, let's go up to this, our fourth derivative of f at 0 times x to the x to the fourth, not x cubed, x to the x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and so on. So we know that's the Maclaurin series, and they want us to find the first four non-zero terms. So since we know f of zero is zero, that's not going to count because that is that is zero. We know f prime at zero is one, so that's that's the beginning. So f of zero is zero, f prime at zero is one. How about f double prime at zero? Let's look at this. F double prime is same thing as second derivative of f. So that's when this when this equation for n is n equal to one. So when n is equal to one, you have minus n, so minus one times the first derivative of f at zero, which we know as one. So f double prime at zero is negative one. How about f triple prime at zero? F triple prime at zero is now negative two times this thing above. So negative one that gets us two. Fourth derivative at zero is what? Negative three times two or negative six. Hey, we got f we got first four non-zero coefficients, so now we can plug this in. So the first four uh, non-zero coefficients, let's plug this in. F of zero is zero plus f prime at zero times x is x plus f double prime at zero, which is negative one x squared over two factorial plus f uh, f triple prime at zero, which is two x cubed over 3 factorial minus minus 6 times x to the 4th over 4 factorial and obviously this simplifies as x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4 so we have it and they also want us to find what they also want us to find the general term of the Maclaurin series let's let the let's let the general term be a sub n let's let it be a sub n then what do we have? We have negative 1 to the n plus n plus 1 x to the nth over n for n greater than or equal to 1. You can check this out. When n is equal to 1, you have negative 1 to the second power, which is positive 1, times x raised to the first power divided by 1. When n is 2, now we got negative 1 because you have negative 1 cubed times x squared over 2 and so on. So that's the general term. So that's it for part A. How about for part B? Determine whether the Maclaurin series described in part A converges absolutely. That's when the series, the sum of the absolute value of the terms is converging. Converges conditionally. That's when the series of the terms is converging. Or diverges at x equals to 1. Let's start by checking the conditional convergence. We have this function, x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4. At x equals to 1, we have 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4, and it should go on, 1 plus 1 over 5, and so on, blah, 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 blah. And does this converge? Yes, it converges. And why does it converge? It converges because it is an alternating series. It is an... It is an 
alternating alternating series alternating series meaning the signs of the terms is switching around plus minus plus minus plus minus with with the terms decreasing decreasing in magnitude magnitude and approaching approaching zero that's the alternating series test if the terms are decreasing in magnitude and approaching zero as in this case the alternating series is going to converge how about the absolute convergence do we know anything about it well what's the what's the series of the absolute value of the terms that's one plus one half plus one cubed plus one fourth and so on this is the harmonic series harmonic series or the p series with what p is equal to one and we know this diverges because p is great less than or equal to one so it does not converge absolutely but it converges conditionally converges conditionally okay so that's the answer for part b now let's look at part c write the first four non-zero terms and the general term for the Maclaurin series, let me rewrite that, g of x is equal to integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. Let's start by finding some of the terms. g of 0 is integral from 0 to 0 of f of t dt, which is going to be 0. g prime of x is derivative with respect to x of this integral. And what? By definition, by sec, uh, not by definition, but by second fundamental theorem of calculus, you know this thing is the same thing as f of x. So we know g prime of 0 is same thing as f of 0. And we can go on. Second derivative of g is going to be equal to first derivative of f, just differentiating its side. And uh, uh, third derivative of g is going to be equal to second derivative of f, and so on. So we can, we can determine g of 0. We know g of 0 is 0. g prime of 0 is same thing as f of 0. We know g double prime of 0 has to be what? f prime of 0 g triple prime of 0 is going to be f double prime of 0 g to the uh, fourth of 0 so the fourth derivative of g at 0 is going to be f triple prime at 0 and g to the 5 of 0 is f to the 4 of 0 and so on so let's evaluate some of this we want to find the first four non-zero coefficients so we got 0 for the first one what's f of 0 we know f of 0 is 1 so we know f of no, 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 f of 0 was, f of 0 was 0, so f of 0 is 0, uh, f prime of 0, f prime of 0 is 1, f double prime of 0 is negative 1, f triple prime at 0 is 2, uh, fourth derivative of f at 0 is negative 6, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 6, so we got 1, negative 1, 2, negative 6, hey, first four non-zero coefficients, so we can write out the, write out the Maclaurin series, we got, we got the second derivative, so that's 1 times x squared over 2 factorial minus 1 times x cubed over 3 factorial plus, let's go on, plus 2 times x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus 6 times x to the 5th over 5 factorial. And we can simplify this, x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 6 plus x to the 4th over, uh, what, 4 times 3 or 12 minus x to the 5th over 20. And uh, maybe you realize 2 is 1 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3, 12 is 3 times 4, 20 is 4 times 5, and so on. So if they ask us to find a general term, it's going to be, uh, the sign is switching to, so negative 1 to the n times x to the n over n times n minus 1. You can check this. For n is equal to, n is equal to 2. For n is equal to 2, negative 1 to the second power is positive 1. x squared over 2 times 2 minus 1 or 2 times 1. So we have it. So now let's look at now let's look at part D. Let p sub n at one half represent the nth degree Taylor polynomial for G about x equals to zero or the Maclaurin polynomial for G, uh, evaluated at x equals to one half, where G is the function defined in part C, using the alternating series error bound to show that the the error we have in approximating our function using the Taylor polynomial is less than one over five hundred. That's just definition, uh, not definition, the theorem for the alternating series error bound is the error is going to be what? Error is going to be less than or equal to the next left out, next left out term. And you gotta take absolute value of that. So we went up to what? We went up to 
fourth derivative or x to the fourth. So we went up to this term. So we did not go all the way. So the next left out term is x to the fifth over 20. And we know x is what? 1 half. So we got 1 half to the fifth over 20. The same thing as 1 over 2 to the fifth, which is 32 times 20. And this thing is less than 1 over 25 times 20 or 1 over 500. So the, our error is less than 1 over 500. So we are done.